Hey guys, welcome back to the Gears and Tool channel. Today we are reviewing the Leatherman Charge Plus, Charge TTI, and Charge G10 Special Edition. And I was going to do three separate videos for these uh, different multi-tools, but I figured they were similar enough it'd make more sense to do the review in one video and then kind of do a comparison as we go through them so you can see what the subtle differences are between these models. So there's a lot to cover. Let's go ahead and dive in. First things first, let's see what else comes in the box. Now, the Leatherman Charge Plus and the TTI come in this uh, kind of standard box where the Leatherman Charge G10 edition comes in more of a blister pack that gets destroyed when you open it. So let's go ahead and open this up. And I've already taken the tool out of this, which would sit in this pocket. It comes with a nylon sheath. There are some leather sheath versions, but they're gonna come packaged the same way. And the nylon sheath's pretty nice because it has some loops on the side for putting things like pins or little pin lights. Open it up, and then and inside this bag you get a bit kit, a pocket clip, and a lanyard attachment ring. Now I really wish that when you had the Letterman Wave, you would get the pocket clip and the lanyard loop. I understand why they don't provide the bit kit, but um, they don't even include the pocket clip or lanyard loop. So that is a nice thing about the Leatherman Charge series. You get all the little accessories that you kind of are left wishing you had when you buy a Leatherman Wave. So that's what comes in the box. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the tool itself. Okay, so the Charge TTI is four inches long, 1.48 inches wide, and 0.78 inches thick. And the total weight of the TTI is 8.4 ounces. Now the G10 version and the Charge Plus version are the same length and width. And that's primarily because the frame of these multi-tools are the same. Now, when we talk about weight, there is a big difference. The regular Charge Plus is 8.05 ounces. The TTI, like I said earlier, is 8.4 ounces. And then the G10 version is 7.6 ounces. So almost a full ounce lighter than the titanium version. So for reference, the Leatherman Wave Plus is 8.2 ounces. So it's actually lighter than the Charge TTI, but it is heavier than the standard Charge Plus and the G10 Charge. If you're interested in a more detailed review of the Leatherman Wave Plus, I'll put a link in the upper right hand corner and in the video description below. The only other difference I can see between these three charges is the thickness of these tools. The Leatherman Charge TTI is 0.78 inches thick, where the Leatherman Charge Plus is 30 thousandths thinner, coming in at 0.75 inches thick. And then for reference, the G10 is 0.77 inches thick. So very comparable, but for whatever reason, the TTI is about 30 thousandths thicker than the standard Charge Plus. One other difference I wanna point out is I noticed on the TTI and G10, you have Torx heads attaching the scales to the multi-tool, where on the Charge Plus, we have rivets. And I don't really know why they did it differently. It seems kind of odd that the Charge Plus would be put together with rivets where the other two would be screwed together with Torx screws. Even the Leatherman Wave, for example, uses Torx screws. So that is kind of an oddity with the Charge Plus. It's the only Leatherman in the Wave, Charge, or Surge series that uses rivets for assembly. Real quick, before we start reviewing the outside accessible tools, I want to talk about the scales of each of these and how they feel a little bit different. First, we have the Leatherman Charge Plus, the standard version, and these have aluminum scales on them, and the scales are relatively smooth. I think they've been lightly bead blasted, but they don't have a real aggressive texture to them. You can feel the uh, Leatherman lettering in there that's been stamped in, but uh, it doesn't have near the texture that these other two have. But um, pretty good, simple design, um, but I do find it to be a little bit slippery when wet. Now the Charge TTI uh, has a pretty aggressive texturing to it and I really like it. It kind of sticks to your hand. It doesn't tear your hand up or anything like that, like knurling on a weightlifting bar. But I find that the texturing on the Leatherman TTI just really kind of locks into your hand. The scales on the TTI are also customizable. Um, these large kind of flat spots, if you order this tool from Leatherman directly, you can have them print a name or a design or something like that right on the flat spot to the tool handle scale. So pretty cool little design feature there. But overall, I'd say the Leather TTI has the most aggressive texturing on their handles. And finally, we have the G10 handles. Now the G10 handle, the uh, texturing isn't as aggressive compared to the TTI, but the uh, kind of loose texture, I'll call it, is cut pretty deeply and it really does grip your hand pretty well. Um, it doesn't feel like it's going to uh, you know, fly out of your hand when you're using it, but it doesn't really stick to your hand the same way that the TTI does, in my opinion. I personally like how the G10 handles look and feel the best, but that's just my personal preference. Let's go ahead and take a look at the outside tools. So all three of these tools have four one-handed deployable tools on the outside handles, which is nice because you don't have to open up the plier just to get to some of your basic functions. So the blade shape of these three tools is basically the same. They're 2.9 inches long, which is nice because it falls under three inches, which is enforced in some regions. But uh, 
The blade steel is a little bit different on the basic charge series versus the TTI and G10. So the basic charge has a 154 CM blade where the TTI and G10 version have S30V, which is a nice touch. The knives operate smoothly and come out of the box razor sharp. So I'm really a big fan of the Leatherman charged knives. In my opinion, these outside accessible knives is what has made Leatherman such a dominant force in the multi-tool market for so long. So on the other side of the tool from the knife is your saw. And the saw on these tools is gonna to be exactly the same. You can kind of see why I decided not to do three separate videos. A lot of these tools are literally exactly the same. So very functional saw. Um, I've used it a bunch. It works great on wood and plastics and stuff like that. Um, really not a whole lot more to say about the saw other than that it works great. All right, so taking a look at the other knife that this tool offers, we have this rated edge knife. Now this knife, is only a 420HC steel. Unfortunately, it's not made from the more premium 154CM or S30V steel. I really wish it was since we're paying quite a bit of a premium for this tool over the Leatherman Wave. Now, something I do want to note is it does have a uh, kind of gut hook or fish hook, whatever you want to call it. But for cutting things like paracord, string, stuff like that, you have a serrated blade right there. So I find myself just using the serrated edge. Just for a quick reference, I want to point out that the Leatherman Wave knife does not have the hook on the tip of it. Only the Charge Series knives have that. Final feature on the outside of the Charge tools is the file. And I really like the Letterman file. It's my favorite file of all the multi-tools that you can currently buy. And the reason I like these files more than any other files I found on other multi-tools is one side has diamond coating. And this is great if you need to do a touch-up sharpen on your pocket knife in the field. Uh, maybe you have a dent on your drill bit tip and you just need to clean it up real quick until you can buy a new one. This diamond file is great for doing some of that metal work. Also, on the other side, the cross hatch comes all the way out to the tip. Some multi-tools don't do that. They kind of half-ass it and come almost to the tip, but then the tip isn't finished. I personally find myself using the tip of file a lot, a lot like this to kind of take nicks and dings out of things. So definitely a welcome thing. Um, the file on the Leatherman Charge, Wave, and Surge are definitely best in class. The final thing I like about the file is the bottom of the file is cross-cut. And this is great for cutting small pieces of bar stock, slot cutting screws that may have been stripped out. I find myself using the bottom of the file because it has the kind of metal saw built in a lot. And most multi-tools don't provide that. I don't know why, but Letterman really knows what they're doing and they do a great job on their files. Let's go ahead and open these things up and take a look at the pliers. There's the Charge Plus, TTI, and G10. Now all three models have a uh, similar plier actuation. They actuate smoothly. They're not stiff like the Leatherman Wave. Um, the frame has uh, some flex, but you know, well within tolerable. Now looking at the pliers really quick, um, they're basically the same between the three, except for one feature. On the tip of the needle nose, the Leatherman Charge Plus has a flat face for the needle nose plier grips. But the TTI has a wire crimper in the tip of the needle nose pliers. And I personally don't really care for the wire crimpers. I like having the flat face on the tip of the needle nose pliers. In my opinion, it makes for a more useful pair of pliers. Interestingly, the G10 model also omits the wire crimping feature. So that's only available on the Letterman TTI version. If that's important to you, the TTI is going to be the one for you. In my opinion, I prefer the G10 style and the Charge Plus style. All three of the plier heads have removable wire cutters, which are the same, which is a nice touch, and a similar shaped needle nose tip, which comes to a very nice point versus a blunted needle nose tip, which uh, other tools like the Swiss Tool X have. So all in all, I really like the pliers on the Charge series. I'm just not a very big fan of the wire crimper that the Charge TTI has. On another note, similar to the Wave and Surge series, it is easy to get the meat of your hand pinched in between the handles when you're using these pliers. If you're really cranking on something and it slips off, I've given myself blood blisters multiple times on the palms of my hand. So be a little bit careful with these particular multi-tools if you're really using the pliers hard. I tend to grip back more on the handles to protect myself from getting bit on the inside there. Okay, so those are the similarities to the plier heads. Let's go ahead and take a look at the inside tools. Now the inside of the charge tools are exactly the same between these three models. So I'm gonna go through them pretty quickly. But first we have the bit exchanger, which is something that a lot of people really like about Leatherman. Um, the bit that comes with it is a Phillips 2D driver or a flat driver. They also all come with this bit kit with six additional bits with room to add a few more. The second tool inside this handle is the cap lifter slash can opener, which also has a set of wire strippers in the nook there. A lot of people really like this Eagle Claw style uh, can opener. I like it as a cap lifter. It seems to get the job done. On the other handle, we have three additional tools. We have a flathead screwdriver slash pry bar. We have 
an eyeglass screwdriver kit, which has a flathead and Phillips head tip on it, which I actually like this a lot if you uh, are ever doing uh, like sight adjustments on your rifle or pistol, um, these work great. And finally, a pair of scissors. And I'm not a huge fan of uh, scissors on my multi-tools, but a lot of people really see them as a necessity. So, um, you know, they do have a pair of scissors like a lot of multi-tools do. And um, my torture test for scissors is paracord. Now, my test here is if it can cut the paracord unsupported, it's a great pair of scissors. If it um, can't cut all the way through with one cut or needs to be supported like this, this pair of scissors is only okay. So let's go ahead and do the torture test to see how it does. And as you can see, the scissors aren't quite big enough to cut all the way through. They do a pretty good job though. They're just leaving a little bit left, but they're not quite getting all the way through. So I'd say these scissors are above average. However, when I support the paracord, it does just fine. If you're not careful though, you can roll the paracord over in the scissors themselves. So again, these scissors work pretty good, but they're not perfect. But you guys gotta keep in mind, this is a really small pair of scissors. You can't expect it to keep up with a pair of kitchen shears like this. So for what they are, they do pretty good. All right, so that was my quick and dirty overview of the charge, charge, and charge. So which one do I think is best and what do I recommend to you if you were to ask me? Well, first of all, the basic charge plus is the most cost effective charge. If cost is a consideration, but you want more premium materials than the Leatherman Wave, I would definitely recommend the Leatherman Charge Plus basic version. The reason for that is you save quite a bit of money with this particular multi-tool over the other two options and the 154 CM steel is really good. I think the 154 CM is a little bit underrated because everyone likes to say they have the S30 V steel which is a little bit more expensive but Benchmade even was using 154 CM steel for years on a lot of their knives. It's a very good steel. It's going to hold up two to three times longer than the 420 HC steel that you find on the basic Leatherman Wave. That being said I'm not a huge fan of the handle scales on the the, uh, basic charge plus I wish it had a little bit more texture and I think it's a little odd that the uh, tool is riveted together I'm a little concerned that if it loosens up over time you don't have a good way to tighten it back up and on a tool that costs this much I like to be able to service the tool myself now if cost is no object to you do I recommend the TTI or the G10 personally I recommend the G10 and there's a couple reasons for that the first reason is you don't have the wire crimpers in the tip of the tool you have a nice flat tip on the needle nose pliers which I really personally like also this G10 version is almost a full ounce lighter than the TTI version so because you get needle nose pliers that are a little bit more functional and the tool overall is almost an ounce lighter my vote goes to the G10 version. So none of this is to say that the TTI version is a bad multi-tool because it's not, it's a really good tool. And if you're an electrician or something, the wire crimpers in the tip might be a huge benefit for you. And there aren't that many other options that have titanium scales. It's kind of a cool factor that you can't get anywhere else. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this casual review of the Letterman Charge, Charge, and Charge. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button below. It helps the channel out a lot. And don't forget to hit that subscribe and bell icon so you're the first to be notified when I release new videos just like this one. Cheers. Thank you.